Greetings. Welcome back to Ministry Monday on this wonderful July day. I hope that you're having a blessed time and that your church is in revival and there is harvest going forward. I'm trying to help you in dealing with difficult people. Primarily, just now, we're talking about dealing with narcissistic people. Uh, sometime back, I realized that a particular person I had dealt with for a period of time was 100% narcissistic. And dealing with this person was like being uh, a bull rider in a rodeo. Now, I don't know anything about bull riding, and I don't have one ambition to do that, and never had any. But at some point, the horn sounds, and the guy on the bull gets to get off. It usually isn't a very graceful departure, but he gets to get off. The deal with pastoring a narcissist is the horn never sounds. You never get to get off the bull. And every day, every week, it may go several months, it may go a quarter of the year, it may go six months. That there is not a major bump in the road, but one's coming if you're dealing with a narcissist. And you need to know that. What I'm dealing with is in my book, uh, pastoring a narcissist and you can find it on Amazon or you can find it at my website. What's it like to pastor someone who is narcissistic? Now, we talked about the traits in our previous Ministry Monday session, but there's some things that really don't manifest themselves. They're not identified with those traits that nonetheless impact your understanding of them. And the more that you can understand this, the more effective you can be. The first is this, the narcissist who you pastor is going to be perpetually disappointed. Nobody ever lives up to their expectations. The stage has never been high enough, the lights have never been bright enough, there's never been enough applause given to them. Nobody else has ever helped them enough. They cannot be pleased. They cannot be satisfied ever. Now, it doesn't mean you go out of your way to just be a pain and aggravate them, but no going in that you cannot please this person. It's impossible. Okay. The second thing that's real world is that as you pastor and as you win people and people relocate perhaps to your congregation or you become the pastor of a different congregation, narcissists almost always make a good first impression. They have a firm handshake, they are in nice clothes, they have a good public presentation. Okay, so immediately they come off as this is a winner. This is somebody I want to know. Okay, now this is going back to that deal. You can't cubby hold them because you will meet, hopefully, many people who make good first impressions who are not narcissistic. But this is one of the things that is real world in dealing with them. The third thing is the narcissist must have attention. Got to have it. They are their child, must have a lead in the drama. If they're not involved by the director's decision, they're going to find a way to shoehorn themselves in where that they can be on stage and be noticed because they have to have the attention. Okay, I talked about them making good first impression. One of the traits of narcissistic people may well be the expensive looking bling. It may be their phone, it may be the buckle of their shoe, it may be the cuff links they have on. But they have this deal that they have to have the attention. It goes beyond just wanting to look nice, okay? There are times when I wear cuff links, I want them to be nice looking cuff links. I'm not opposed to somebody noticing that they're kind of unique. My wife bought them for me as a gift. All of that's fine and dandy, but that's not every time I walk out the door of our home or outside 
the door of a hotel room where I'm going to preach. Narcissists must always have attention given to them. Fourth, the idea of serving in silence is as foreign to a narcissist as my ability is to speak Chinese. These people expect public honor for anything they do. Jesus warned against the very thing that they want. He said that if you get your honor here, there's none waiting for you in heaven. Narcissists are not wanting to get their award in heaven. They're wanting to get it now. And Jesus calls such people a pretty harsh word. He called them hypocrites. This is real world. This is the way this stuff shows up in the people you pastor. Narcissists love a, a, a quick reward. In our most recent history here in America, there have been so many jobs available that in our community, in the Midwest of the United States, there are employers who have adjusted their approach to payroll. If you work today, you get paid today. The payday today is a mindset of the narcissist. They want to be noticed now. They want it now. They want a quick reward. They're full of self-interest. They do their God things, whether it's a Sunday school class, an offering given, a prayer chain, all of the things that they do are done with the wrong motive. They have the wrong drive behind them. And if you validate that wrong drive, then one narcissist becomes two, and then two become four, because you're validating a behavior that is inconsistent with the Scripture. Okay, now... Hopefully you kind of get your brain working a little bit thinking about those narcissists that you know and love and the ones that at times have caused you so much challenge. There are ways to deal with it. We'll talk about that a little bit. But right now we just need to be thinking about who it is and the sort of people that become hindrances and obstructions to the work of God and exploit others, take advantage of others, wound others in pursuit of their own self-idolatry. See you next week. We'll talk some more about pastoring a narcissist.